Good morning, everybody. Good, good morning, Maddie. <laughs> Come on in, folks. Do find yourself a seat. My name's Kate. I'm going to be guiding us through this morning. Um, great to see you here. Great to, whether you're here in the room, whether you're joining us online. Morning, folks. Um, we've got, hopefully, a great morning together. Can anybody believe we're in February already? Where did, where did January go? I can't believe it. Um, we have got Joni leading worship with us this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got, we've got Mark speaking later as well. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll have a great time. Our, our children and young people will be going off shortly um, to their groups. But before we do, we're going we're gonna to sing together. But before that... Um, there's a verse or two I'd like to share with us just to, to start this morning. Now, I am not one of the world's greatest gardeners, but I do enjoy growing orchids. I've got about 30 of these things. Um, so when I say I enjoy it, I, you know, I mean it. <laughs> um, and I was, I was watering about half of them yesterday. And I don't know whether you, you know with orchids, but they, their roots, obviously they, they kind of grow in the pot, but they also have some that kind of grow outside the pot as well. And just occasionally, one or two of mine, like growing them all outside the pot and not in the pot, and um, they, they don't do so well in that case. Um, and as I, was, as I was doing some Bible study yesterday as well, actually, I came across this verse. Um, this is in Ephesians 3. Um, it's verses 16 and 17. Um, it says, this is Paul speaking. He says, I pray that from his glorious riches, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down into God's love 
and keep you strong. Amen. So I thought what a great message for this morning that actually as we put our trust in God, our roots will grow down into him. So let's just pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the creator of all things. But before you created anything, you saw us and you chose us. Lord, we want to welcome you here this morning. We pray that through your spirit, you would strengthen us and that you would make your home in our hearts this morning. And as we, as we allow you to do that, we pray that our roots would grow down into you so that we can be fed, we can be nourished and we can be strengthened. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, you're here. Um, our first song is, is Our God is a Great Big God. So um, may I call on anybody who knows the action of this song? Um, Keisha and friends. Oh, yes. New Life Youth, New Life Kids, New Life Kids. You can stand here, join us. Let's um, praise the Lord this morning by knowing how great and how big he is. Oh, thank you. Yay! Let's all stand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. 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 And He holds us in His hands. He's higher. He's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe. And beyond our wildest dreams. And He is lovely. And He is lovely. Since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And He holds us in Our God is a great big God. 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 And He holds us in His He's higher than a skyscraper. He's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe. And beyond my wildest dreams. And He is holy and He is lovely. of our lives I just hope and pray that we um, we see that God is all we need this new this song is a new one uh, I hope ev some somebody has um, heard of this song it's called my God is all I need and um, in our everyday lives he is truly all that we need and um, so as we sing this song I hope that we can personalize it it's all about me I I want God it's my he's my strength and everything else so let's together learn this song Light at my 
Nidia and uh, the other kids, Hannah and Obi, Orly, Ada, sorry. Come on. Come on. Let's show them what this next song is all about. Despite they're little, they're precious in God's sight and they're very valuable. Yeah. All right. Shall we turn around? Yeah. Are we ready? Are we ready? Shall we turn around? Turn around. Let's see them. Okay. Let's see. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are did thank you so much are you about all ready to go off to your groups yeah it, we've come to that point in the service you guys could take a seat <laughs> um, it is time for our children and our young people to head off to their groups and to see what they're going to learn this morning so shall we just pray for them before they go Heavenly Father we thank you for this amazing gift that you've given us of all these children all these young people and as they go off now, Lord, we just pray you would give them a really special time together this morning, that they're going to learn lots about you and that they're going to build some really good friendships. We pray for their leaders as they guide them through this morning. Just be, be with them, give them wisdom, energy, strength, all of that. Just be with them all, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hosanna has two versions. One is the, the Old Testament version and the New Testament version. The Old Testament is more on, please save me, save me. Which is like, if you picture yourself on an island without anything and you cry for help, please save me, someone save me, it's a cry. But then the New Testament version, it has 
change a little bit because now you are excited for the salvation. It's like you can see there's some, maybe a boat, a helicopter for the rescue, and you're excited. Here is salvation. And in the Bible, it has been mentioned several times, Mark, John, uh, Matthew, about Hosanna, Hosanna to the one who comes to save. So let's all stand and let's sing this song and let's picture ourselves in the presence of God where He's coming. Here is our salvation. Here is our salvation coming to save us.
compassion, O Lord God, as we wait for you, for your coming. Lord, abide in us. Come live in us. Come live in our hearts. Abide in us, O Lord God, as we wait for you. telling us surrender everything surrender everything to me and I will be there for you I will catch you I will show you the ways so it would be nice to just surrender everything to Jesus offload and it's going to be lighter
to Jesus humbly at His feet. I bow. And all to Jesus I surrender humbly at His feet. I bow. O worldly pleasures, all forsaken. As we're in this moment and we sing this song, God, will you show us how to surrender? It's a word we say often, it's a song we can sing, but God, 
Show us how to surrender. Show us how to lay it down. Show us how to raise up a new life in you. Fill us now with thy holy presence. We need you, God. I need you, God. We need you, God. And we want to lay it down today. We want to lay it down. I just wonder whether we should respond this morning. What's that area in your life that Jesus is saying? Lay that down. What worries and what fears, what anxieties is Jesus saying? Lay it down. pursuits and what passions is Jesus challenging this morning and saying lay it down just need to take a posture of saying, God, I surrender afresh to you today. God, whatever you say, whatever you want to do in my life, whatever your desires are for me, God, I want to surrender to your will and to your ways, Lord. Why don't we just posture ourselves, whether we remain standing or kneel or come out to the front whatever that might be this morning, just to posture ourselves and say, God, I want to surrender more of me to you, Lord.
been singing some dangerous songs in here this morning. I surrender all. I surrender all. Knowing you, Jesus, that's the most important thing. And I just feel in my heart that God is saying to people here, and Mark touched on it a moment ago. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your soul. And that sense that those who have struggled, those of us who have struggled, put myself in that camp as well. Jesus is saying, hand it over, hand it over, because he can carry it. He walks with us, that's his promise. I will be with you, I will not leave you. Hand it over to him, whatever it is. It may be a person, it may be a situation, it may be an illness. Hand it over. Come to him. Come to him. Just want to add something to that. Um, there's a couple of lines that have really stood out to me this morning, and they are that all I surrender all and everything I am for my kingdom's cause. Like Bob says, they're, they're dangerous things to, to sing, sing, to pray. Um, but I just sense there may be somebody or, or some people here who actually, as they sing that, maybe they can't sing it, maybe you can't sing it because you feel it's not true. And maybe you're sort of thinking, actually, that makes me a liar. And I don't want, to, I don't want that to be the case. But if I sing that, that's what I'm being. And I just feel, if that's you, I just feel that God is saying, actually, I see the intention of your heart. I know you want that to be true. And we can sing it at the same time as asking God to make that true in our lives and to help us with it. So if that's you, I'd encourage you. If that's what you want, if that's your heart's desire, give it to God, bring it to God, and he will help to do that work in your life so that you can sing it and say it with confidence yeah that's it knowing you Jesus knowing you there is no Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and take us. 
Come and shape us, come and mould us, Lord. Come and fashion us. That we may be all that you want us to be, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, praise the Lord, friends. Just really feel God speaking us to us today, and uh, um, in terms of things that are prepared to share with us today, I just <laughs> it's kind of once I get going, you'll know <laughs> that uh, God's speaking. And so let's just listen to the voice of the Lord and to His uh, speaking into our hearts and lives today. Amen. God, we thank you for one another today. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you, God, that you are here by the power of your Spirit, Lord. Thank you that we are yours. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but one day we will be like him. Thank you, Lord. And so, God, meet with us today in this place and draw us into a closer walk with you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I um, shared some thoughts a few... Oh, dear me, too many Fs and THs. I shared some thoughts a few weeks ago um, and I entitled it Aiming for Success. And we talked from the passage in Philippians of which we've sung from this morning. And so I'd love if you've got your Bibles with you to turn to Philippians chapter 3. And uh, let's just continue hearing what God has to say to us today. Let me just get some tech out. For those of you who've got a smartphone, uh, you could also get that at the ready for a little bit later. That would be great. Philippians chapter 3, we'll we'll begin at verse 7. We read the whole chapter last time, but I just want to pick up on some thoughts. Um, Last time we talked about knowing Jesus and how that that was Paul's central theme and get hold of that. And I just want to uh, just conclude some thoughts there. Well, conclude. There's so much in this chapter, which is uh, so, so great, but... uh, We'll just uh, want to add some thoughts to that today about what Paul's saying, what it means about knowing Jesus. And so let's read from verse 7 and uh, let, let's read to the end of the chapter, I think. So hear the word of the Lord. Verse 7, I once thought that these things were valuable. He's just gone through all of the things that we could count as being valuable in life. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, Everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus and my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him and share in his death so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things. 
or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. And if you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress that we have already made. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I've told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows that they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we eagerly await his return as saviour. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for your word to us today. God, may we be shaped by your words. May we be transformed by what you speak to us today. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and to lead us into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I found to come across some statistics of a survey in 2019 of 3,008 to 12-year-olds who were asked... What do you want to be when you grow up? The top five answers were, in no particular order, teacher, professional athlete, astronaut, musician, YouTuber, vlogger. Which one do you think was the top answer? Oh, you've learned from last week, haven't you? (laughs) Which was the bottom answer then? Oh, no, you're wrong. Andy, what's on the next screen? Look at that. Teacher was up there, John. There you go. (laughs) What do you want to be when you grow up? Maybe some of you saw the cartoon animation of Charles Mackey's, uh, Charles Mackey's, Charlie Mackey's book, uh, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse at Christmas. There's a picture of the boy and the mole sitting on a tree. The mole asked the boy, what do you want to be when you grow up? The boy says... Kind. You know, the, the thinking in the world around us, it's great to have ambition and it's great to have goals and to become something in terms of career, but there's a life that God has for us which is far deeper and far more powerful and far more about his purpose for our individual life. And it's what Paul is expressing in this chapter when he thinks about what I could have had and what I could have been. Actually, when I get to know Jesus, all of that is insignificant rubbish. Actually, what's most important is that I know him. And as we go through scripture, we see that the the culture of this world is at odds with the culture of God's kingdom. It's inconsistent. It's in conflict. It's contradictory to the things of heaven. When, When we look at the Sermon on the Mount and we go through the things that Jesus said, so often he turns things on their head by saying things like, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Love your enemies and give to those who want to take away from you. Murder and adultery begin in your heart and those thoughts in your mind are as bad as you committing the physical acts. And in Philippians 3, 5 and 6, Paul lists out those credentials. He had the the best 
in the community. He, he came from the best family. He had the, a, a status which was uh, to be envied by many. But when he met Jesus, all of those things fell into insignificant. Everything was counted as worthless. And in verse 12, and I've put a couple of different translations of the, that verse on the screen to help us grasp this text. Verse 12 in the New Century Version says, I don't mean that I have already, that I am already as God wants me to be. I have not yet reached that goal, but I continue trying to reach it and make it mine. Did I put that on my slide, Andy? Might be there somewhere. Christ wants me to do that, which is the reason he made me his. And the Living Bible, it says, I don't mean to say that I am perfect. I haven't learned all I should ever learn, but I keep working toward that day when I will finally be all that Christ has saved me for and wants me to be. You know, I find this, this verse a very comforting thing because Paul heads out by saying, I haven't made it. And when we think of the Apostle Paul, we think of somebody who's got um, the gospel sewn up and knows everything. But actually, he says to us this morning, he stands here with us and he says, I haven't made it either. I haven't made it either, but I'm on a journey of processing, a process of transformation. Not that I have already obtained this, I haven't reached perfection. This man who wrote nearly a quarter of the New Testament and nearly half of the books in the New Testament says, I have not yet arrived. What I am on is a process of a transformational journey. Not that I've already attained this, I've not reached perfection. I love that, and I love the fact when I look at the disciples and I see the kind of lives that they lived and the things that they did, I think, hallelujah, we're all failures and we're all doing stuff wrong and we think the wrong way. We've all got fears and attitude problems and worries, but we are on a journey of going somewhere in God. And Paul's comment is this, I haven't yet reached it, but I am on a journey of being changed by God. I think I told you this story a long time ago, or a short while ago. The story was a long time ago. Anyway. I know what you mean, John. I, um, when, uh, when I was dating Susan, um, I, I felt the, the, uh, the call and the drawing of God to go to Bible school. And so uh, I responded to that call. And uh, before, we, before I went to, to Dallas, because I went to Dallas, there was no mobile phones. This is back in the 80s, guys. I know you can't remember that, can you? And I know I don't look that old. But um, anyway, but... <laughs> um, Susan and I got engaged. And Susan will tell you the story that as I, as I departed on that journey and went overseas for, for the next nine and a half months... Um, one of the things that Susan said to, said to God was that even though she'd got an engagement ring on, she said, God, unless you change him, I'm not going to marry him. <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, I went on a journey and God met with me on that journey and changed me. Because I, I, was, I was still a teenager, even though I was in my early 20s and just... Uh, well, anyway, I, I wasn't obviously the person that Susan would really like to marry. But the point is this, that actually even thinking about that change that happened 30-odd uh, years ago, you know, unfortunately, I haven't remained there either. I've actually been on a process of God changing my life, day in and day out, week in and week out, out months in, months out, year in, year out, of actually being on a journey of change. I don't know about you, but at the beginning of the year, I ask myself questions like this, and I say, in what areas of my faith is deeper this year than it was last year? Do I know Jesus more this year than what I did last year? Have I grown spiritually and emotionally more mature this year than what I did last year? 
because we are supposed to be on a journey of transformational change. And Paul said, I, I, I'm giving myself to that. I haven't yet arrived, but I'm giving myself to that journey. And the word that he actually uses there when he says, I haven't arrived, he says, but I press on. This is a really strong word, and it's a, it's a committed determination to a long following of Jesus. I press on. It's actually a word which in other verses is translated persecute. It's that forceful. So in Matthew 44, for example, when Jesus says, say, uh, I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those that persecute you. It's the same word. It's this word, pursue you. And Paul's using it in this context to say, actually, guys, I am committed and determined and tenacious and I am not going to let go of this thing. I am going to follow after Jesus and become all that he wants me to be. There's this dog with a bone, you know, I'm not letting this go. When the things get tough, when things happen in life, when, when the struggles come and I feel as though I'm making one step forward and two step backwards, when I feel as though nothing is really changing, I am not going to let go of becoming what God wants me to be. I love the fact that when Paul, uh, at the end of his life, and he's writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy uh, 4 verse 7, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. And I just love that fact that you can look back, that he could look back over life and say, I've fought it. It's, you know, life is not easy. It's something that in faith with God that we have to fight to actually follow after God this tenacious attitude. The word also speaks of being a prolonged pursuit, not the kind of short-lived, quick fix type thing. Let's follow Jesus and let's see whether it works out. No, a commentator said, following Jesus is the continued effort of a lifetime. I hear the words of Jesus when he turned to the disciples and he says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Well, let's unpack that theology. But Jesus is looking for people who will actually follow him and follow him and keep following him and are determined to follow him and want to be changed by him. And so Paul says, I haven't yet arrived. I'm pressing on to be what? I'm pressing on, he says in verse 12, to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. In other words, I am completely focused to become what God wants me to be. That is what I want. What does God want for me? What has Christ Jesus got for me? That is what I want to become. The most successful thing in Paul's life as we read that passage of Philippians 3, to be successful in life, aiming for success, is to be all that God wants me to be. Pete Scazzaro, in his uh, book, Emotionally Healthy Discipleship, when he sums up the life and teachings of Jesus, he says this, success is becoming the person that God wants you to be and do the things that God wants you to do in his way and according to his timetable. You know, when we think back to Genesis, we go all the way back to Genesis 1, and we see God creating, and we see God making man, and what does the scripture say? He made man in his image. When God says that about man, he's not talking about his hands and feet and eyes and ears. It's not talking about a physical image. It's talking about the characteristic and the nature of God. He's talking about God's love and justice, God's care, God's creativity. We have been created as human beings in the image of an almighty God to represent his life and his nature and his purposes in the earth, to fill the earth with his likeness. 
And sin messed all of that up. Sin came into our world and, and taught us to forsake the love of God and His truth. Sin taught us to take and grasp instead of receive from God's love. Sin taught us to put ourselves first and to put ourselves at the centre of our lives. And we were led by our own pride and selfish thinking. But the purposes of God through Christ Jesus is to redeem us for Himself so that His purpose and His plans and His becoming can be worked out in you and me so that we can be who God has called us to be. And Paul is wanting his readers to grasp it, that God wants you, your life, to be full of His purpose. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life in all its abundance. That's a God life. I was reading uh, one of my devotionals this week and there's a prayer at the end of the devotional. It went like this. Jesus, I want to become an accurate reflection of who you are. Paul wants to become this true reflection of who God is. If you've got a smartphone, there's a little exercise that we're going to do together. It's QR code on the screen. Those of you who are here Christmas Day, you had a precursor, pre-worn. Oh, has it gone dead? Let's have a little bit of a exercise together. What are the characteristics that actually accurately reflect Jesus Christ? So you scan the QR code with your phone, which you can normally do by going into your camera mode, put the QR code up and it should link you to a website. And on that website, you should have be able to fill in some questions and tell me this morning, what are the characteristics that actually accurately reflect Jesus Christ. Here we go. Well done, everybody. You're doing great. Those who are online, maybe you could put something in the online chat. Those who are in the room without a phone, you can shout out. <laughs> oh, wow, that's very good. So what have we got? Audacious, like that. Peacemaker, truth, grace, loving, friend, compassion. Love's in the middle there. That's because there's probably a lot of you who put that. Faithfulness, perfection, eternal, diligent, humble, meek. The characteristics of Christ, saviour, forgiving, faithful, wise. Some of you need to watch your spelling as well. <laughs> Uh, sorry. You know, the only, the only danger with, with, with thinking lo like this and along these thoughts, there, there is, there's a danger that we can actually think to ourselves, if I do those things, then I'm good. But the danger is that we can act in a certain way, but actually not be transformed deep within. And Jesus had a lot to say about that, about people who would act one way on the outside, but internally they were a different kettle of fish. And we need to be people who are being transformed by the nature of God. I like to say this, that, that uh, God's not looking for things from you. Just release yourself from that. God's not looking for things from you. What he's looking for is things for you. God's more interested in becoming in you than he is about the things that you do. Because the things that you do will flow out of his nature without any effort when you are changed on the inside. God wants you to become like himself. And Paul's comment is that I want you guys to take hold of this with determination, with tenacity to take hold of the fact that God wants you to be what he is like. Let that be formed in you. 
And Paul was saying, I want to possess everything that God has got for me. At the end of that passage in verse 15, if, we, if you've thought that that wasn't what God wanted, Paul is quite clear. He says, let all who are spiritually mature, in verse 15, agree on these things. And if you disagree at some point, God will make it clear to you. In other words, I'm right. <laughs> this is what success is. This is what life is all about. It's about knowing Jesus and being transformed into his likeness. In our Advent service at Christmas time, we spoke about Mary. And we talked about that instance where the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, a young teenage girl. And the angel Gabriel speaks words to Mary that kind of poof. You know, you, you are going to have a son by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are, the son that is going to be born of you is going to be called the son of the highest, the son of God. And Mary, as she's receiving this information, is kind of trying to process it and then echoes some of the most profound words and long may they be something that we would go into this year with. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. A young teenage girl who had really no idea in one sense of the understanding of the the hugeness of what was about to happen. In her humility and lack of understanding, she said, I want to be a servant of God and let your word to me, let it accomplish everything that you have spoken. 30 years later, Mary is at a wedding and the wine has run out. And you know, it's such a precious thing that we have these phrases from Mary because I think it reveals somebody who had a devotion and an understanding of who Jesus was. And she invites Jesus into the situation, not as a guest, but somebody who can transform that situation. And she says to the servants, whatever he tells you, do that. Friends, this morning, those two phrases of Mary, we need to pick them up and realize what God wants to do in my life, in our lives. A few years ago, a friend passed a prayer onto me, and I'm going to put it up on the screen. It's a kind of prayer that sets us up to become all that Jesus wants us to be. And in a minute, I'd, I'd love for you to join me in this prayer. But I don't want to do that out of some kind of compulsion or some kind of indoctrination. And as Kate very articulately and very rightly said earlier, you know, it's not to say that we've arrived. I surrender all. It's not to say, Paul's, when Paul was saying, you know, I haven't arrived, guys, but I surrender all. I haven't yet made it and I still make mistakes, but I surrender all. I haven't, I haven't quite got everything sussed and all the, the, the T's crossed and the I's dotted, but I surrender all. I don't know what lies before me and what, what's going to happen in the rest of my days. I don't know what trials I'm going to suffer. I don't know what things are going to come my way. I don't know how God's going to call me to live. I don't know that God's going to call a, a, a boy and a girl from Norwich to come and lead a church in Sleaford. I don't know those things that are going to happen, but I surrender all. And it's that choice to say, 
Jesus. And as Paul puts it in in those words, whatever Jesus has got for me, whatever he wants to do in my life, that's what I want. Because how can there be anything else in this world that could be greater than pursuing what the God of all creation who foresees and foreknows and has eternity in his mind, how can there be anything, any other thing that I would want to do other than possess and follow after that which Jesus wants me to be? And so as we, as we close and we just close with this prayer. You know, it'd be, it'd be great for all of us to think to ourselves, Jesus, I don't know what you've got for me. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know the call that you have got for my life. But one thing I want to do today, I want to lay hold of, I want to grasp, I want to get everything that you've got me for. And in order to do that, we surrender to him as the Lord, as the master. As Mary said those words, whatever he says to you, do that. And so if you would join me in praying as we pray together, let's say it together. Jesus I invite you to be Lord of my mind and all my attitudes and my mental health, my body and my physical health, my spirit and all my worship. Jesus, I invite you to be the Lord of my family and all my relationships, my sexuality and all its expressions, all my work and service for you. Jesus, I invite you to be the Lord of all my material goods and needs, all my finances, all my emotions, and all of my reactions. Jesus, I invite you to be the Lord of all my words and conversations, all my will and all my desires, and the manner and the time of my death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give ourselves to you, not because you force us to do, not because you crack a whip or beat us with a stick. God, we give ourselves to you because you open your loving arms. And through Christ Jesus, you say, run in. And when we run into your arms, we realize that you have so much for us, so much for us to become. As Paul said in his letter to the Romans, he says that God knew us before time and he chose us to become like his son so that Christ would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. And so, God, we say today, Jesus, help us to become more and more and more like you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Before we uh, finish our time together this morning, we have, of course, got the notices. Um, Alex, are you saying something about prayer for... Yeah, so um, this Tuesday is the first Tuesday of the month, so it is our day of prayer. Um, So if you're around in the morning, um, that starts at nine o'clock here in the prayer room. 
Otherwise, half past seven, Tuesday evening, we will be here. Do come and join us. And did you want to say something about it? Alex is going to tell us a bit about what it's about. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. So this is our monthly prayer meeting, prayerful. We're going to do something slightly different next week. Um, off the back of what Mark said and what we've been singing today, really felt the presence of the Holy Spirit here today. And the Holy Spirit is what it's all about. He is what it, it's all about. Jesus is the key. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus. So just remind us that we are God's chosen people. We are his redeemed. We are a royal priesthood. We are the light of the world. And the way that God deals with us is by us telling us to pray to him. And when what we pray for in our spirit lines up with the Holy Spirit, he answers those prayers. So we would expect to see lives change. Mark talked about restoration, revival, renewal. Those things don't happen when you just walk about and do nothing. They happen in prayer. Now, so the next thing is really that one of the problems with prayer meetings is people don't come because they feel like I'm not really a gifted prayer. Well, actually, that's a lie of, of the enemy. We are the body of Christ. Everybody sitting in, the, in this room can pray, okay? So can I encourage you, please, if you don't normally by habit turn out to the, to, uh, up to prayer meetings, can I ask you to please come to the prayer meetings and join us because that's the way that God chooses to put to forward the kingdom is by us praying in his will and he answers the prayers. It's life-changing. It's church-changing. So please, here's a personal, you can use this as, a bo- as emotional blackmail if you want. Please, 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 if you don't normally come to the prayer meetings, if you possibly can, I understand looking after children and jobs and all that sort of thing, if you can, please come and join us. It's non-threatening. And if you don't know how to pray, the way that I learned to pray was by attending prayer meetings and listening to other people. And the Spirit does something with you, and then you just start to pray because you've got something to say and something to pray for. So on Tuesday evening, the agenda is completely given over to the Holy Spirit. There is no agenda except being led by the Holy Spirit. So we will be asking him to come in his power and his might and his majesty to work amongst us. We'll be asking him to help us to pray. And I want to encourage you to feel free to step forward or to sit where you are and to give a scripture, a word of knowledge, all the gifts of the Spirit. That's what we're looking for. We're looking people to not just be observers, but to be participants. If you don't want to, that's fine. That'll come later on. But what I'm saying to you is if we, if you can turn up and we're going to pray together, be prepared. If you're led by the Spirit, and the Spirit sometimes, it's a little prompt, I should say something, and you go, no, I'm not good enough to say that. That's nonsense. If you feel inspired by the Holy Spirit to to say something, to give a scripture, to give a word, just take that as the Holy Spirit saying, Alex, say this. Okay? Just so please, turn up, we'll be led by the Holy Spirit. There'll be times of silence. There'll be times of waiting. People will come forward. People will give scriptures. People will speak. Please, we're going to lift our hearts and our minds and our souls up to the living God and ask him, in the spirit, to do with us as individuals and as a church what he wants to do because we want to glorify him, we want to honour him, and we want to keep ruling the kingdom. People need to be saved. People need to be saved because they're lost. And this is one of the places on the Tuesday night prayer meeting. So for the third time, please, if you don't naturally turn up to prayer meetings, can I beg you or plead with you, come along and join with us because you have lots to offer. In Jesus' name, please. Amen. It's like like the biblical approach. If when it says it more than once, it's really important. (laughs) So that's half seven this Tuesday. Hopefully we will see you here. Um, This Friday, also half seven, um, it's Sleaford Keswick Bible Ministries meeting at Riverside Church. Um, The speaker this month is a a guy called Sam Albury, although he's not with us in person. It is a video um, and it is of the, um, his very first talk from the first week of the Keswick Convention from last year. Um, So that would be great to see you there if you're able to join us.
Louise also has a notice for us. This Wednesday at six o'clock, second chance have got their AGM. So if you want to come and find out more about what we do, if you're interested in becoming a trustee or a member of Second Chance, Second Chance is a Christian-led charity shop that runs around the corner from here. And um, we do loads of good work raising funds for projects uh, locally, nationally and internationally. So if you want to come find out more, Wednesday at six o'clock here. Thanks. Thanks, Louise. Uh, this coming Saturday, it is the men's breakfast at the Barge and Bottle, 9.30. Um, book in through Church Suite if you can, so they know you're coming. That'll be great. Uh, last but not least, now last week we had one job opportunity. This week, we have two. Um, so, um, you, you may or may not know that Jane Duncan, our manager at preschool, has handed in her notice and is going on to pastures new. So... Um, we are advertising for uh, the, the position of manager at preschool. Um, you can get details of that through the office. I think you can find it on our website as well. Um, closing date is actually this coming Friday. Um, so if you know anybody or you are somebody who would be interested, do have a good look at that. Um, similarly, um, we are advertising for the detached youth worker position, which is, which is really exciting. The closing date is slightly later. It's the 16th of February on that one. Um, again, you can get details from me in the office. You can get them through the website. Um, we would really appreciate your prayer on this one um, because we really want to make sure that we've got the right two people in these jobs and that they're the people that God wants to be in there. So exciting. Yes. A little bit sad with Jane going as well, but exciting as to what God's got in store for us next. Uh, that's it. Notices wise, um, just as we draw to a close, I just want to take um, the opportunity just to pray about our tithes and offerings. If you would like to give this morning, um, you, there will be details on screen as how you can do that online. There is a, a box at the back you can drop any offerings into. Um, let's just pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your generosity and all those qualities that we've thought about this morning. Lord, we want to bless you for all that you've given us, all that you do for us. Lord, we pray that you would take these tithes, these offerings, um, that you would grow them and use them to see your kingdom come in this town and in this church. Because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our time has come to an end today. Um, thanks to everybody who has been involved in part of the service, uh, especially our, our kids and young people's workers who are still going strong out there. Do, if you've got your kids out there, do go and pick them up. Um, we've got tea and coffee afterwards, um, so do come and join us for that and an Anatta, and have a great week.
Thank you.